Hey everyone, welcome back to FPL Fran. Today's video is going to be the Game Week 1 Defenders Cheat Sheet. If you've never seen the Cheat Sheet series before, it's effectively a tier list of certain positions in FPL dependent on price point. So we're always looking at the sort of best value picks on any sort of area and take into context the most sort of meta drafts around and team structures. One thing I'll say about this season is, yes, there have been some bonus changes that have negatively impacted defenders as a whole, but not all defenders get impacted equally. I think some of the changes definitely do impact some of the attacking fullbacks who tend to get bonus when they concede goals or regardless of when they concede goals. So this applies to some of the best and most prolific attacking fullbacks like Trippier, Poro and Trent, but it also impacts some fullbacks from some of the weaker teams or weaker defenses rather. So Ait Nuri is a very good example of that from Wolves. As far as the overall impact in BPS, the general change that has the biggest impact is minus four BPS per every goal conceded. That obviously is not actual points, it's just BPS, but it clearly means that unless your team gets a clean sheet, it's very unlikely for you to get bonus as it stands as a defender because there have also been some positive impacts that have helped boost attacker BPS. What I will say though, is that if you look historically into the sort of BPS or bonus points accumulated by premium defenders in the past, like let's say City defenders, Arsenal defenders, and Liverpool defenders outside of Trent, most of these players do not get their points through bonus points. They actually get most of their points through just the goals and assists that they accumulate, and more importantly, the clean sheets. So once again, the most dominant factor to getting points for defenders, which is obviously obvious, is clean sheets. So... That is a good context, and that's also why I generally think that premium defense is not overrated this season at all. Yes, of course, Arsenal got huge price increases, and inflation has come into the world, but in my opinion, there's still good value when the fixtures are right. You can argue, of course, Arsenal fixtures aren't perfect at the start, and that's what we'll go through in this video. So starting from the 4.0 defense position, you're looking at nailed starters from promoted sides, likely Johnson from Ipswich, Faze from Leicester, and Howard Bellis from Southampton. I probably like Howard Bellis and Faze the most because Howard Bellis is someone who probably has good fixtures to start with. Southampton have better ones than Leicester actually have a decent run, um, whereas I do think Ipswich will unfortunately be the projected worst defense in the league and that's sort of why i don't like johnson despite him being a fullback you have to be completely honest and and, and suggest also that attacking fullbacks from some of the weaker teams unless they have a lot of set piece duties like doughty last season have really minimal avenues to points so this applies to someone like leaf davis but because the opening fixtures for ipswich are so bad i just can't see the reason to actually hold an ipswich defender with barco it's a little bit of a weird thing where estupian is actually close to coming back around game week four that's the expected timeline the eta per se but brighton's fixtures only really get better after gaming four and for barco the early punt might not necessarily work out so well although you can up you can make the argument that brighton are a better defense in general compared to the promoted sides and maybe that barco punt could work out if you're going on an early wild card as far as the defenders what is nice about the 4.5 territory is it's definitely great for your third or fourth defensive spot. I've even seen some drafts with maybe two 4.5 consistent starting defenders, maybe with a little bit of rotation. Whilst I still hold a preference for the premium defenses by just simply looking at the expected clean sheets and also sort of even projected points for some of these defenders, given the sort of impacts of the BPS changes, I still think that you need to pick right and, and correctly with the 4.5s, but you also need to pick around your team structure. Let's say you start the season with Saliba. His tough fixtures are game weeks four and five. Therefore, someone like Konsa is going to cover really well for game week four and five, even though Konsa, when you see on this fixture graphic here, it has a bad game week too. These 4.5 defenders are also important because you're less likely to use transfers on these players. You probably want to have these players um, up until your first wild card, and you, you therefore need to take into account more fixtures than just game weeks one, two, and three. And that's why I, I, I quite like Konsa for that reason. Aston Villa have a generally great run of games after game week two. And despite them being a slightly worse defense than some of the other teams featured in this 4.5 defenders tier list, they just have great fixtures. And I would back them to get a decent amount of, let's say, expected clean sheets over that period. With Anderson, you're looking at a top four, top five defense for the last two seasons going. Not much has really changed in terms of the underlying metrics under Glasner, the new manager. And I really think that Anderson is, is the most logical pick, even over someone like Guehi for the time being. We tend to see that he is slightly edging Guehi on some of the 
attacking metrics and is also the central hub of the team. So I do think Anderson is the pick to go for for Crystal Palace, but there's nothing really wrong and there's nothing too much, of course, separating Gwehi from Anderson. In my opinion, there really is a 1% to 2% sort of percentage impact based on my predictions. But of course, someone will get a goal, someone will get an assist, and that will have a crazy impact on points. Mikolenko is great for covering Everton. I have heard some transfer news linked to Mikolenko, but it doesn't seem like he's that likely to leave. He has access to the Everton defense at 4.5, and Everton really stuck out as an amazing team last season for both clean sheets, but more importantly, the key metric, which is expected goals conceded. So I really do like Mikolenko as a pick, even when you look at, let's say, game weeks one to four, very good fixtures because there's two home fixtures for Everton. As far as Martinez, this requires a little bit of, you know, positive, I suppose, aspirations for Man United to step up for from an awful, awful season of defense in particular. They were really poor last season, close to a re relegation level of defense. If they actually make the sort of transfer changes that we're expecting them to have, and considering that they've already made a few, I do think that this is the season likely where we'll see Martinez and Lissandro, or even let's say Shaw, for example, tick up in terms of our expectations to, to get points from. And so I do think Lissandro Martinez is at an interesting price. And I think in terms of teams that could actually definitely step up a lot compared to what we saw from last season, Man United are definitely one of them and when I start the season necessarily with Lissandro Martinez I'd say probably not which is why he's not a green pick right now but he's certainly a pick that I will definitely be keeping my eyes on as soon as we tend to see a little bit more from Man United at the start of the season with Dunk I think he's quite a valuable pick because he very much mirrors what I've discussed about with Anderson but I think he does play for a slightly worse defense he has also proven to be a very strong arrow threat in the previous seasons and he is a good pick as far as Robinson, we heard some recent news about the coming comings and goings of Fulham and Sessegnon seems like he's quite close to the club. At the time of recording, he hasn't signed with Fulham, but that will likely have a small impact on maybe a future rotation for Robinson, who in my opinion had a great season last time out for Fulham, but is also competing with Castagna, another very good and interesting attacking pick. Tete, of course, is the other right back at Fulham. I probably would still lean Robinson for the minutes, but my mind can change based on Sessegnon. And keep in mind, unfortunately, players like Robinson and Castagna aren't negatively, you know, disbenefited from the expected lack of clean sheets that Fulham will get and the bonus point impacts. Uh, with Kelly and Byrne, there's two asterisks says here the game week one fixture is the key portion for Newcastle players you want to own a Newcastle player who starts in game week one because that's their best fixture and presumably you're also owning let's say a Newcastle defender to cover or paper over a crack that crack might be let's say Guardiola's game week one fixture versus Chelsea and if you can get some information from the preseason, which I still have, you know, yet to receive really from Newcastle, I think we can get a bit of a better understanding of, let's say, Kelly and Burns minutes, and maybe make the correct assessment as to which 4.5 defender is the one to go to. Some Newcastle fans clearly do not like Burn, but that is also not a reflection of what Howe thinks. So I'm a little bit leaning towards Burn being the option if you just want to have that start in game week one. So take that as you may. Van de Ven's an interesting one. I think it really comes down to how you read the Tottenham fixtures. I don't think Tottenham have awful defensive fixtures. In fact, they're actually quite decent. The question is whether you actually expect for Tottenham to show a renewed level of improved defense this season. I tend to think that that's plausible because they also had a lot of injuries suffered last season. And with a little bit more solidity, with a little bit of more sort of trans for strength built around key areas in the pitch, I can see Tottenham once again taking a little bit of a step up, even on the defensive aspect of things. But it is also a bit of, of a leap in faith. What, what is nice, though, is the Tottenham fixtures at the start are quite good, which means that Van de Ven is still a pretty reliable pick. With Light Nuri, Wolves fixtures are really poor, despite him being actually a fullback that I really like. So for now, I've ignored him. At the 5.0 position, once again, the logic for Van de Ven is very much going to prevail for Yurogi as well. We did see that he ended the season with surgery, unfortunately. He had to sort of cut his time short. But we're looking at Yudogi being a very interesting option at the start of the season now that he's presumably fit. I will stay tuned towards the preseason minutes for Tottenham because it's very likely he also needs to rebuild a significant chunk of match fitness, even more so than some of his peers, considering that he's also coming back off of surgery. I like Tottenham's fixtures, but I can clearly understand people wanting to lean towards someone like Daniel Munoz instead. Munoz comes from, once again, a much better defense in the last two seasons in Crystal Palace. We're also looking at Munoz being one of the, the more prolific attacking fullbacks within the league. If you've watched some of the Copa America matches, you've seen already some of his goal-scoring exploits. Um, and he does take a lot of shots 
as well within the Premier League. If you look at the sort of shots on target metric, him and Udogi, Poro, these sorts of players take a lot of shots. And I do think this is very conducive to ultimately having a very strong defender because even though you might not get bonus points for being an attacking fullback, you're still going to get points for being an attacker. As far as Shaw, it's a question of as soon as he gets reinstated, as soon as the Man, C Man United fixtures get better outside of game week one, I don't think the Man United fixtures are that good. So I would tentatively put Shaw right now as a bit of a yellow pick. If he gets more set pieces, if he sort of, you know, retains them, takes the left side of corners, I think he's going to fly up as well within this cheat sheet and he'll definitely be a good pick going forwards. As far as the 5.5 tier, my logic for Yogi very much holds true to Poro. I think Poro is very well priced despite Tottenham once again being a team that we tentatively look at as a pretty weak defense. Um, Poro at the end of the season as well was extremely prolific and, and generally throughout the season last season too was an incredible attacker for Tottenham. Not even when Madison was out and when he took set pieces but just in general in terms of open play as well. His underlying stats are also really good. Really good XA and I really do like Poro still as a pick so forth for this season. As far as Akanji, I do think that close to the end of last season, I felt like he was someone who was, you know, not very injury prone, was clearly a main part of Pep's plans. You can go Walker here or Ruben Diaz. Um, I think Stones is always a huge liability in terms of his physical fitness, unfortunately. So Akanji is a player that I, I quite like because he's in of prime age. He can play multiple roles in the team. We've seen him play right back. We've seen him play right center back. We've even seen him play left center back. And I wouldn't even be surprised if he could actually play a bit of left back. And we've also seen him play effectively in the midfield as well within the pivot with Rodri. So I do like Akanji's sort of positional strengths um, and his flexibility. And that's sort of why he's the Man City pick that I would recommend. I think City's picks and rather fixtures are actually quite good to start the season. So I do like Akanji. Guardiola is a player still of my preference. But keep in mind, uh, the, the genius of Pep Guardiola also has, you know, its cost in FPL. The issue is if, if he ever decides to change his mind, if we, let's say, see the implementation of Jack Grealish as a player at the start of the season and, you know, more minutes for Jack, that could reduce the role that we saw for Guardiola at the end of last season. And, and that could obviously take away from a little bit of his value within the game. I, I still tend to think that Guardiola is a pick that I like very, very much so. So I'm not too low on Guardiola at all right now. In fact, he's in my current draft. Just saying, of course, he was extremely impressive at the end of last season, but things can change very quickly, especially under Pep Guardiola with Van Dijk. Um, it's quite simple. Same with Robertson. Liverpool's fixtures are amazing. Robertson, unfortunately, has been has not been able to travel to the Liverpool camp for the preseason in the United States, and he won't play for the three fixtures. But he might still be ready for game week one. I just generally question, unfortunately, given the general decline in his minutes year on year, and also this injury that he's surfaced or dealt with, whether he'll actually lose out in minutes come game week one. And I think that's more likely than not, which is why I'm a little bit low on Robertson to start. Van Dijk's fixtures are great, which is why I'm very high on him. With Gabriel, I think he's a great pick, but the issue is going to be Calafiori coming into the team. It's not just Calafiori being a like-for-like -like replacement for Gabriel, nothing of the sort, but it's the idea that there are so many players now, especially with Timber coming in, that could put into question what sort of different tactical styles Arsenal can employ and whether Gabriel is impervious to all of them and these changes. So in my opinion, Gabriel is at risk of losing a few more minutes this season and Saliba is the only player in the team that I would say is 100% nailed. White for the time being is also nailed too because of the Tomiyasu re-injury and that's sort of how I feel about the Arsenal defense early doors. Why I still have Saliba a tier below Gabriel is simply because I think he is hurt the most by the bonus changes. He is the least threatening offensive player for this Arsenal team. And it's not like they have great fixtures, but you can definitely have players like Konsa, players like Dunk who can effectively cover game weeks four and five. But the issue with Saliba, as I said, is going to be that he did, does get impacted the most because he was the central hub of the team, because he also got a lot of avenues towards points through bonus, which will now be affected by the season, mostly because of the attacking changes. If attackers get more BPS nowadays, it makes it even more difficult for Saliba to retain bonus points, even in games where he might be able to keep a clean sheet. And as far as Trippier, it seems like he might be on the way out, but I also generally don't rate Newcastle defense too highly. And I think outside of the Southampton at home fixture, it's not like it's an amazing run of games compared to, let's say, Liverpool's run of games. So that's why I'm a little bit lower on Trippier and he's only a differential for now. With White, I do think he's nailed to start the season, but he generally is very, very costly and he doesn't really bring 
nearly enough towards the table on the offensive side of things compared to Trent Alexander-Arnold. You might disagree with me because you might maybe have a disagreement in terms of, let's say, Arnie Slot's tactics and whether he's able to utilize someone like Trent at the start of the season. But that's generally my assessment. I do like White's minutes, however, and I do recognize, of course, that Arsenal have good fixtures, but there is quite a steep cost right now at the start of this season. With Trent, he has amazing fixtures to start. He is most likely going to try and replicate the Gertruda role. The Gertruda role is a little bit different. Gertruda is a completely different player. Um, when you look at the sort of profile that Gertruda is, he uh, prefers, you know, short passes, pass accuracy, and he does make a lot of runs and dynamically towards, you know, great offensive areas in the pitch. What we've seen from Trent at some times under Klopp is that he's a little bit more of a pivot option at times when inverting, and he doesn't always pop up into great expansive attacking spots like Gertruda does. And he is, of course, a notorious and world-class long, long pass player. And, and that is a very different type of game. So we will see what happens with how, let's say, Arnie Slot plans to implement someone like Trent into the team. I still tentatively think that as long as you are a world-class player, it's it's very hard to imagine that you will suddenly lose the sort of attributes that you would have previously had towards points. We've seen Reese James be an impactful attacking option under different managers, although he doesn't unfortunately get to play football very often. But with Trent, I would have to say, because he is so world-class in certain attributes, I just can't see why he would necessarily be a bad pick. It would be a bit of reach for me to still sort of make that conclusion. So I'm, I'm generally quite high on Trent. What is also nice is even if you don't really like Trent in open play or Arnie Slot in open play, he will still be a set piece taker for the team. He will still take free kicks. He will still take set pieces like corners. And so that is what the value of Trent is overall. And that's why he still commands a very good price despite the price decrease. And I still think he's a great pick to start game week one with. And that's going to be the defender's cheat sheet. For the goalkeepers, we'll probably look into that as part of the cheat sheet video. Tentatively right now, I would say the same logic prevails for most of the goalkeepers here. I'll talk about the goalkeepers in a separate video, as I said. Just think it's it's not necessarily worth looking at because we might have a lot of changes towards the goalkeepers and we might even get more information as to who starts for the goalkeepers um, later down the line. So thank you guys so much for watching. See you guys in the next video. Take care and goodbye.